Good morning. I do have a couple of announcements to give you this morning. Uh, the first one is a, uh, one we hear every Sunday. Please fill out the yellow cards. Now, I said this morning at Dawn and Grace, I cannot stand filling out those surveys. You know, you go to the restaurant and say, please fill the survey out, or you go to a meeting. <sighs> this can feel like a survey, but look, what we do, we uh, track our attendance with these, and we also invite you on the, on the reverse side of that card to put down your prayer request because we use that information for our Wednesday evening prayer meetings. And yes, we do meet for Wednesday evening prayer meeting uh, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. downstairs. If you are able to come and join us, we'd really love that. Kids worship hour will be right after our first hymn this morning. Um, the next announcement is about a, a July 17th worship service. The Gideons will be bringing the message on that Sunday. The Gideons are a uh, Christian businessmen's organization that uh, distributes Bibles around the world. And so they are going to be coming and telling, uh, telling us some uh, stories about how those Bibles have changed lives. The worship committee has graciously uh, decided to put up a Bible display throughout the uh, sanctuary. So what we're doing is we're inviting you to bring a favorite family Bible. Uh, want it here by July 10th so that they have time to put those displays around the sanctuary. Simply ask that you put a 3 by 5 card or a piece of paper inside that with your name so that we can return it to you. Uh, we will take care of them. Um, we will treat them very well. And we ask that you bring them and put them on the back uh, windowsill back there, uh, the big windowsill behind the Ca Connect Cafe table. Um, if you could have those here by July 10th, we would certainly appreciate it. Youth Fellowship will not be meeting this afternoon, this evening rather. We will not be having Youth Fellowship. Instead, we invite you to celebrate Father's Day. By the way, happy Father's Day to all of our fathers here. Um, United Methodist Women will meet on Tuesday, June 21st, 7 p.m. The Pastor Parish Relations Committee will meet on Thursday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. Are there any other announcements that need to be mentioned this morning? I know we have one over here. Go ahead, sir. This will be my last advertisement for the pit beef sale. So next Saturday, that sale will take place at the Crowley Fire Hall from 11 to 2. I have 18 tickets left. I would like to get rid of them. Uh, we take, you can buy a ticket, you can give a donation. The, uh, this pit beef sale will go back into our fund to help in the community, uh, to help community service organizations. So, I mean, if you want tickets, I can give you the tickets. You don't have to pay me now. You can pay when you pick up the, the sandwiches. Okay, thank you. I do believe that the Lions Club pays for the bus, correct, for uh, Bible Adventure. So, you know, by buying a sandwich, you help with that worthy ministry, and that comes right back here. Uh, to us. Awesome. Any other announcements that need to be mentioned? Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the opening voluntary.
Thank you. Would you stand for the call to worship? The words are printed on the screen before you. Oh God, your name is majestic in all the earth. Your glory is chanted above the heavens. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let us sing together. Let us pray. Eternal God, the earth is yours and all that dwells therein. The moon and the stars reflect your radiance. You are the potter who fashions beauty from mud, the painter who hangs the rainbow in the sky as the sign of your covenant. We join with those through the ages who have lauded your works of creation and redemption evermore praising you and saying, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Please be seated. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 8. Psalm 8, the words are printed on the screen before you. I uh, invite you to join with me as it is printed there. I'll read the regular type and invite you to respond with the bold type. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. 
Our act of praise is number 176, Majesty. You may remain seated as we sing together. Our scripture lesson comes from John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. John in the 16th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. Listen to the word of the Lord. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen.
And now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As we know, we are celebrating fathers this morning. For me, as is the case for many of you here this morning, uh, it is a bittersweet day. It's been five years since my dad passed away. And I can still remember the call I received from my brother, the long drive to Arizona and the time spent with my mom and my brother and sister as we began the long process of mourning my dad's passing. While I celebrate that I am a father and a grandfather, while I love my children and my grandson deeply, Father's Day will forever carry an element of sadness for me, even as it does for many of you. Perhaps it's because of that sadness that I appreciate the gift that my mother gave me as we mourned my father's passing together. It was probably the second day after we had arrived at Arizona at my mom's house, and she took me out to my dad's wood shop. It was on his back porch. She had closed it in. She stood beside me and said, Jim, I'd like you to have your dad's woodworking tools. In some small part, the pain of my dad's death was made bearable as I packed those tools to bring them home. Indeed, every time I go down to my own wood shop, I hear his voice. Jim, this is how you set up this particular machine. This is how you make that particular cut. I smile as I turn on my dad's lathe and hold the turning chisels in my hand. My heart swells because I know that it's dad's belt sander that is smoothing out the roughness of the wood and dad's hammer that drives the nail. The hammer that I remember when I was like eight years old. I still have it. It's cool. I'm even a bit proud that it is dad's teaching that has given me, in large part, my own skill in the wood shop. Truly, my memory of my dad's place in my life is kept alive in some small way through those tools. Yet as much as those tools mean to me, there is a gift that my parents gave me that means even more. Indeed, they lived, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. Perhaps you will recognize it a little more quickly from King James. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Truly, my parents would tell my siblings and me about Jesus and his love. It is a gift for which I will be forever grateful. In truth, they were, indeed mom still is, following the command that Jesus gave his disciples at his ascension. You remember those words recorded for us in Matthew chapter 28. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Moreover, the ability to fulfill that command came because of a promise Jesus made even before his crucifixion. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, because He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is Mine. For this reason, I said that He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. Sisters and brothers, I am standing here with you this morning in large part because my parents taught me about Jesus. My friends, it would be easy for me to stop right here. Indeed, it would be 
easy. Indeed, it's a temptation to put on my rose-colored glasses and say to you that even in my father's death I have found joy. Indeed, a part of me wants to praise God and send you home. Yet, as we take a look at the larger picture surrounding our morning scripture passage from John chapter 16, we will notice that the situation was anything but happy. Truly, that picture is predominantly a sad one. Jesus had just told Peter that Peter would deny he even knew his master. Not once, not twice, but three times. Jesus would tell the rest of the disciples that the world would hate them. He said that they would throw them out of the synagogue because of their association with Jesus. It could be argued that what has become known as the farewell discourse of Jesus should really cause us to throw up our hands in defeat. It could be argued that to follow Jesus is to set oneself up for heartache and pain. Yet to follow that line of thinking would be an even sadder thing than the image contained in the warnings. It would be just like me refusing to use dad's tools because the memories are too painful to bear. Even though Jesus would tell his disciples about all the trials, suffering, and pain that would undoubtedly come their way, he would also tell them of the joy of walking through all of that with him. Indeed, hear the good in what Jesus would say to both his disciples and to us in this farewell discourse recorded in the Gospel of John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I am them, bear much fruit. Jesus would go on to say, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you this commandments so that you may love one another. And the passage that we are using as a springboard this morning finds its ultimate conclusion in the last verse of John chapter 16. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. The truth is that the end time perspective given in Jesus' farewell discourse is stated clearly. His future victory, his glorification is stated, uh, uh, excuse me, his glorification in the events of his hour is indeed our present reality. The Jesus who spoke in the farewell discourse is the Jesus who speaks to us, who has already conquered the world. The voice that reassures the disciples and points them to their future is the voice of our risen Savior. As I have already indicated, this is not entirely a rosy picture. Jesus was clear in laying out the realities of discipleship, its suffering and the courage it would take to endure it. Yet Jesus does promise that the movement from present pain to future victory is possible because of what He has done for us on the cross of Calvary. Truly, it is the guarantee, the sure, unsakable confidence in Jesus' victory over the world and the peace that victory brings, in, uh, uh, that, that victory makes possible that provides the ground for Christian hope. 
This hope is not idle speculation about the future. It's not starry-eyed talk about what might be or what might happen. Contemporary words of thinking reduce hope to that kind of expectation. Christian hope, however, is the conviction grounded in the victory of Jesus' death and resurrection that one's present and future belong to God. And the result is that all things are possible. Indeed, the measure of what is hoped for is the promise of Jesus. Both the present and the future are redefined by the death and resurrection of Jesus. When we live in hope, our present moves toward those promises and embraces the possibilities to come. Indeed, that future transforms the sorrows and seeming impossibilities of the future. Truly the distinctive contribution of John's Gospel to conversations about hope and the future is the value it places on the present moment as the arena in which God's future is already underway. The resurrection message recorded for us in John is this. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. Jesus' victory is neither partial or only anticipated. It is the truth no matter what present struggles, sufferings, and sorrows may be coming or may already be here. All of this invites us to embrace God's future that has been open for us even in the present moment because of Jesus' death and resurrection and His presence with us in and through His Holy Spirit. My friends, I had to make a decision concerning my dad's tools. I had two choices. And I think they were the only choices that I had. No other choices were. I could let the pain of the memory paralyze me and keep me from making anything new. Or I could see them for what they were. Beautiful gifts. The same choice faces us in terms of our faith. Will we let the persecution and struggles that come to every disciple paralyze us and keep us from proclaiming the gospel? Or will we trust the word of God? What will be your choice on this Father's Day 2022? I hope that as you celebrate your human father's, that you will celebrate the presence of your Heavenly Father. I hope that you will know by faith that He is victorious both in the good as well as the bad, the easy as well as the struggle, the acceptance as well as the rejection. I hope, and that hope does not disappoint me, because of the gift of Christ, in whose name we say, Amen. And amen. Our hymn is number 117. O oh God, our help in ages past, would you stand as we sing together?
let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As you share with us your joys and concerns, I invite you to remember to fill out those yellow cards. You can place them in the offering plate as that is being passed in a short uh, few minutes. What are your joys and your concerns this morning? Juan and I are asking that you continue to pray for our daughter-in-law, Alicia. Uh, she is going in for tests on her heart on the 24th. That's this coming Friday. Yes, sir. Amen. Happy anniversary. Hmm. Yeah. And going along with you here, I'm sure we want to pray for Maddie. I'm really jealous. She's going to Ireland. Cool. Yes. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Spend some time in silent prayer. Almighty God, As the song says, you're a good, good father. For some, that concept isn't recognizable because their fathers weren't good. They have no uh, example upon which to fall. And so I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would come and rest upon those hearts, even as you rest upon our hearts, and convince us all that you are indeed a good, good Father. That you love us and your love is everlasting. Indeed, as the psalmist wrote, who are we that you should be mindful of us? And yet, you love us. Even to the point of redeeming us on the cross even to the point of raising to life again, thereby guaranteeing our place in your family. We praise you this morning for your love. We thank you for our fathers, both good and bad. We pray for them both. 
all of them, Lord God, bless them. For those who are perhaps wayward, we pray that the Holy Spirit would convince them of their need for a Savior. For those uh, who are uh, on the path, strengthen their faith. Thank you, God, for anniversaries. We pray a blessing upon Herb and Pat and ask that you would just make their day wonderful. We thank you that Terry is once again back with us and are uh, seeing your healing hand upon her and rejoicing. We're grateful this morning that you hear us when we pray and that when we ask that you meet the needs of those around us, we're not asking in vain. Indeed, before those needs are even made uh, known to us, you are aware of them and are working in their lives. We pray for Alicia this morning and ask, Lord God, that you would strengthen her, that you'd quiet her anxieties, that the test would come back in a favorable way. We pray for Melissa and her children. Uh, we ask that you would just silent their anxieties, that give them peace. Hold them close to yourself. We pray, Lord God, for Maddie and her dad as they travel to Ireland. Bless their time together. Keep them safe until they're back with us once again. We know, Lord God, that these are but a few of the needs that exist, needs that are beyond us, and yet, Lord God, you are working even there. We pray, Lord, that wherever there is need, that you would suit a blessing. We give you the praise and glory even as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as the ushers come, I invite you to worship through your tithes and your offerings. Would you stand as we sing together? Father, we come here as a thankful people. We have so much to be thankful for. And on this Father's Day, we just ask that you would give a special blessing to all those fathers, all those that fill the role of father, grandfather. We'd ask, Lord, that you'd bless these tithes and offerings as well as those who freely give them. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 77, How Great Thou Art. Let us sing together.
Our benediction is based on Jeremiah chapter 31. Listen to what the Lord says. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and still I maintain my unfailing love toward you. I will lead you beside quiet streams and down smooth, uncluttered paths so that you do not stumble, for I have become a father to you, and you are my firstborn child. Go from here in confidence, knowing that the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit goes with you this day and forever. Amen.